Just let me tell you something. If you don't know, it is a privilege to praise God. I get to my grandma. It is what? A privilege to praise God. Do you know why? Let me prove it to you. Because the dead cannot do what? Praise God. That is why the Bible says in the book of Psalms, it says, Let the living do what? Praise God. Did he say let the dead? He said what? Let the living praise God. So it means that for you to praise God, you are what? Alive. And it is what? A privilege. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now in our presence, we have cooked, we have prepared a delicious meal for the Most High God. But at this time, we worship. We are going to knock on His door and say, Father, your meal is ready. The breakfast is ready. How many of you want to knock on the throne of this this morning? Let me see your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. With a smile in our face and a clapping of the sun, let's call on our worship leader in the person of Ephraim Atiga to come and take us to the throne of praise and give us a hard worship as we worship God this morning. Put your hands together to Ephraim Atiga. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for this day. We thank God for giving us strength. Amen. We thank God that we are among the chosen one this day. Amen. And today we will be blessed. Amen. Who is not a man? He is not a fool. Let us be this is the it's not our mind, it's not our mind, it's not our power.
I got it for you this morning. Have God not done anything for you that you will pray and say this name? Have God not done nothing for you that you will not pray? Open your mouth and pray. Begin to thank God. Thank you for healing you. Thank you for delivering you. Thank you for giving you the enthusiasm to show up. Open your mouth this morning. Begin to thank God. Begin to magnify His name. Begin to adore His name. If there is a man to pray, it's the God's answer. Open your mouth this morning. Open your mouth and thank Him for life. Thank Him for victory. I tell you the truth. You were victorious. I tell you the truth. You were victorious. Open your mouth and praise him this morning. Thank him because you are victorious. Thank him because he has made this sure. I've got that done nothing for you. That you open your mouth and begin to tell me. I've got that done nothing for you. That we were like you to praise his holy name this morning. I've got that done nothing for you. That you will open your mouth and thank him this morning. Open your mouth and thank him for the life he has given you. Open your mouth and thank him for giving you the power to show that. Open your mouth and begin to magnify his name. He is a precious fire. The merciful Father, do you know how many times you are supposed to be caught and healed? That woman who got sick and so, do you know how many times they are supposed to kill you? We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray so deliver us.
you are big and I want people to say, Jesus, you are Marvelous, you are the God of all people say. But you are excellent, you are marvelous, you are the God of all people say. You are excellent, you are marvelous, you are the God of all people say. Cause you are excellent, you are marvelous, you are the God of all people say. Oh Lord, you are big God of what people say. Jesus, you are big God of what people say. Oh Lord, you are big God of what people say. Jesus, you are big God of what people say. Tell me you are. Yeah. You are my Lord. You are big God of what people say. You are.
is the hard work of God. Yes. Do you think God is going to create 7 billion people? And he will create how many of us are here? 100 people for himself. Yes. If, 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 if you create 7 billion people, definitely you create some that is only going to save you. I don't know whether you are getting the revelation. You will save some small ones. The other ones, they should just populate the earth. But there will be, there'll be, there'll be some that is just for you. You are created to be on the earth. Not to worry about anything, but just to serve God. Amen. Because he's a creator. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a creator. And he saves some people by himself. Even if you are the best human being on the earth, when you are dashing money away, do you give a walk? No. You say something small for yourself. Yeah. So God saved the best for himself. And you are the best. Amen. Say, I am the best. I am the best. I am in the presence of God. My duty here now is to praise him, worship him, and honor him. That's it. Clap for yourself. So those that God has chosen, that means they belong to God. People will not understand you when you are chosen. Nobody will understand you except the one who chose you. There's something that God saw in you, that's why he chose you. If you're all correct, your people will keep you. But because God has chosen you, people will not understand you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. You have to come to a point whereby when God is saying, Auntie C, Auntie B, give me that your son. Give me Moses. When Moses was a child, the father had plans. He should become a doctor, a lawyer. And God said, no, I'm giving you other children. Let me have Moses. The father said, hey, Moses, but I know I will give you. So something has to happen. Are you with me? Something has to happen so that God can get Moses. If it's not this Moses, then it's the Moses in the Bible. Because Moses was so good, and she, the mother, understood that this boy is good. That means God's hand is upon the boy. At the same time, the king says that every boy that is born in the same area, the same age, must be killed. It is just for God to grab Moses. Are you with me? Yes. So the mother would have kept Moses because the Bible says that, and when she saw that Moses was good, then she put the boy in the basket. Not that when she saw that the boy was bad. When she saw that this boy is good, I will not let this Egyptians used their sword to cut the baby's head and throw it in the Nile. When she saw that the child was good, that means what she saw is that this child has been anointed by God. That even if I put this child on, this, uh, on the river, because the child is good, God will preserve him. Amen. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Some of our parents, when they see that we are good, they keep us for themselves. They only bring us to God. So that God can do his work in us. The mother of Moses has kept Moses. The baby Moses would have died. And the mother will also suffer. And the children of Israel will never be delivered. Because they are praying for 400 years. And it's like God has forgotten about them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But when the mother saw that the child was good. She put, he, she put her, him in the basket and put it on, on the river. And she said, let your God protect you. The God that has made you good, keep you. Let that God take you wherever you are going. Yeah. It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing to take a fresh baby. A fresh baby, no extra food. And then you put the baby in the basket. Let your God protect you. Amen. And put the baby on the surface of the water. And God, supernaturally, didn't allow the basket to sink. Amen. But the 
baby to die. With all these crocodiles in the Nile, still God spoke to the crocodiles that he touched not my anointing. Do my prophet no harm. And Moses went through all these crocodiles and all the the, 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 the streams, all the forces, the forces that come through the Nile, everything. God stabilized the surface of the water so that the baby will arrive at the place where God has destined for him to be. Yes, Amen. But there must be a mess around. There must be some chaos before you can see the power of God. If everything is good, you don't need the power of God. When there is chaos in your life, get ready to see God's power. Amen. When things look bad and they are going down, that's when you are about to see the power of God. Amen. As long as you can hold on to God, you can hold on to God. Father, things are not good. Things are coming against me, but I'm holding on. That is where you see the power of God. Are you getting me? Right. Other women were salutating their baby's mouth. And the Egyptians, militaries, soldiers who smell that there's a baby in this house and they'll be cutting, cutting things and then the babies will die. But when you have faith in God, you have power to release. I don't know whether you know that thing. Oh, chosen, chosen, chosen 12 years ago, we had something, a term that we used to say. Have power, receive power to release. Those that old chosen, Everybody's provision was for everybody. Can you imagine? You'll be here, your mother will bring you a trunk like, like, uh, like Franca. Oh, I miss Franca. Ah! Franca's provision is in a, in a box. And Franca will just come and put it down. Apostle, this is what my mother brought. And we will add, we'll add this one's provision to it. We'll add that one's provision to that. And we will all chop up. And sometimes you feel like Franca wants to take something for herself, but I will pray for herself and have power to release. Power to release. Don't take it. Don't take a sugar. No, 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 no. We know it's yours. But receive power. That's, that's where we saw the power of God in this house. Somebody gave boxer shots. Mother brought boxer shots from America, properly made. And I said, receive power to release. Amen. New, new guys have come from the ghetto. And all they have around their waist is some rope be that is tying the, the chains they've been wearing for one year. And I say, power to release. Release your boxer shots. Share it for them. Keep one for yourself. That, that is power to release. Power to release. Power not to hold. Power not to be selfish. No. But receive the power to release and to share what you have. Because your source is God. Your source is who? God. And whatever you give, knowing that my source is heaven and God is not broke, God will give you more. You don't understand me? The reason why you can become selfish is because you think that this is the best God can give you. So that's why you are fighting over. I told Jason and Ebenezer, they should have power to release all their clothes. They should walk naked into Genoa's room. They shouldn't carry anything with them. They are still struggling. They are wearing some of the clothes that they got. It's more vulnerable than what is coming. But you have to have power to release. This organization, when we started, they stole all my clothes. I was left with one t-shirt. No, it's not even stealing. It's called sharing. It's not even stealing. I've gone to the ghetto carrying guys, brought them here, and my clothes are hanging on the same thing. I just and they they will pick them up. Ah, this t-shirt will do fix me. They wear it. My boxer shorts. They will tie the side and make it to their size. Power to release. I remember mommy was crying. So now if somebody invites us to go to party, what are you going to wear? This one t-shirt. I was left the one t-shirt. And the reason why they didn't want to take the t-shirt is because it's boldly, it's boldly uh, inscripted. They've written Jesus is the reason. So that one is too much for them. They left, they left that one for me. 
Uh-huh. But all the other shirts, singlets, boxer shorts, they were all wearing them. In the, in the beginning, it's like, you say you do the work of God. Do I? <coughs> you say you do the work of God. Now do I now. <laughs> do it now. And God too was telling me the same thing. You want to stop now? Do you want to quit now? I hope you can see 15 years from now. But that was just the beginning. So I was like, hey, this work is difficult. I lost my family. Lost all my friends. Everybody thought I was crazy. Power to do it. Receive power to do what? Receive power to be rejected. I remember the this interview at Sunny F. They asked me, Apostle, what is their thing, Kra? And I told them that I've been anointed to be rejected. I was anointed to be rejected so that I can relate and I can feel for the rejected ones. So my childhood I must be rejected. When I was a kid, rejected. <coughs> rejected on all grounds. Family rejected, my father rejected. Every ground. So that now you can have a heart <coughs> to see who has also been rejected. So that you can turn the rejected people's life around. But you get you get you get So that means your heart is always like, oh God, how can I make my guys happier? How can I make my people happy? How can I make my people happy? Every second, every second, how can I make my people happy? When you have the house, when you've been rejected before, you can feel for people. How can I make my people happy? God, what must we do? What can I add to the program that will make my guys happy? Yeah. It's always going to be on your mind. It's always going to be on your mind. Because you've been rejected before. And you have a heart that can feel your people. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So whatever you are going through now, I'm telling you that that is what God is going to use to bless you. Amen. When you go through you just have to go through it. You have to go through it. You have to go through it. You have to go through it. Your ministry is tied to your suffering. So if you are the baby Moses or you are the mother of Moses, the same thing that you release today will go, come back and deliver you. Is it not saying Moses that went, stayed in the palace, got trained, gave the mother a job. Normally the mother would have been breastfeeding but nobody would pay her. But because she had the power to release, when she goes to go and breastfeed Moses, she get paid. I wish I had a strong church that I understand. When the woman gives birth, uh, let me try again, maybe they will get it this time. You will breastfeed your child. But nobody is going to pay you for breastfeeding your child. But because she was able to release the child, when she saw that the hand of God is upon the child, and the enemies are coming to kill the child, she had faith in God and released the child. And God said, for that act of release, I will give you double. What women do naturally and don't get paid, you will do it and you will get paid. So, when when Pharaoh's whatever sister or something discovered Moses because she's looking for a child and God knowing that she she must be used for God's purpose God also closed the woman's womb so she never had a child and she's been praying that if he- the God in heaven has rejected me maybe the river now will give me a child <coughs> because they, they used to serve the river now they worship the river now they make sacrifices for the river. So when the mother put Moses on the river, the woman thought the river now has created a child. Amen. Oh my God, you don't get it, you don't get it, you don't get it. So now she took Moses, not seeing Moses as just a Hebrew child, but she see Moses as the river now. The God of it has given me a child. So I must treat this child 
better than even the way if I would, I would have gotten a child by a man. I don't know whether you're getting it. If she slept with a man and she gave birth, she would treat the child. But because she understands that this child came from the river, the child already is gone. Supernatural. Maybe next week you'll get it. So the woman is seeing the child as God himself from the Nile. So she wouldn't want anything to harm the child. So she said, where is the mother who's carrying the milk? She should come. This is her job. Come and breastfeed the baby. Breastfeed your own child who will come in the future to save you. But for now, just for the breastfeeding, so the mother will have access to the child. To, the child, to walk into the palace. What you are going through today, if you are able to release it, you are craving for trauma, release it. You are craving for drugs, release it. You are craving for crazy stuff, if you are able to release it. The thing you release today, it will go and open doors for you. Amen. It will take you to great places. Amen. Amen. The things you say no to it today, it's going to open great doors for you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. This is the message God is giving you. Whatever you are releasing today, that thing will go. Turn around and come and bless you. Amen. To go. Go and turn. And this next time when it's coming, it doesn't come as a baby. It comes fully matured with muscles, with resources, with power. Moses didn't come back as a baby. He came back with a rod. Power. He came back a fully developed man. Power. He so powerful, he could stand before Pharaoh. He could stand and lead the people and instruct Pharaoh that, listen, I'm taking God's people away. I am setting them free. This thing that this boy has been going through for all these years is over now. Amen. I don't know what has kept you down for so long. But if you are able to discipline yourself, you are able to hold yourself a little bit, a little bit, the thing, the sacrifices you are making today will go and turn around, Amen. come back and open big doors for you. Amen. There is no sacrifice that you, you make in God that is in vain. God is not unjust or God is not unfaithful to forget your sacrifices. Every day you wake up and you stand here praising God, worshiping God, whilst other people are sleeping and snoring. Do you think God is unjust and unfaithful and then he will not bless you? He will bless you. He will reward you. He will gather all your blessings. Amen. And he will save you. Amen. God is not unfaithful. Yes, the time you wake up to do praises and worship is the, is the sweetest time to sleep. Yes, yes. I understand that your leaders have to go through a bit to get you awake. But it's a sacrifice that will open doors for you. Amen. Wherever you go, this oil is on your head. The oil is on your head. People will see that no. Something is telling me to bless you. They don't know that it's, it's the sacrifices, your prayers, your praises. You didn't do it unto apostles. You did it unto God. Amen. So the God you've been serving, the God you've been worshipping, that God will reward you. Amen. He will encourage you. Amen. He wants you to continue. Amen. If, if need does something good, and I encourage him, by giving him something or rewarding him, what do you think will happen to me? What do you think will happen? Oh, he didn't get it. I thought you were listening to me. He will do more. Thank you for those two. The two of you are listening. If he did something good and the thing affected me, I will be encouraged. And I will also encourage him. And my encouragement will compel him to do more. That is the same thing with God. God is seeing your effort. And he said, I don't want this, my child, to faint. So let me encourage this boy by giving him something that he never had before. So that he will understand that I got this thing because of what I did for God. Are you getting it? Yes. 
my God. So God has a way of encouraging us. And he wants you to continue. He wants you to continue. So he will open one door. Before he realizes he's opening the next door. He's opening another door. With God, he can go so fast. Before he realizes, he will turn around and say, Wow, this is me. Look how far God has brought me. So this God you are serving, it is not a mistake. It's the best thing that has happened to you. For some of you, do you know that chosen is the best thing that has happened to you? Yes. You, you might not see it now. You might not see it now. You might think that it's bad. You might think that this place is the worst thing that has happened to you. But to God, this is the best thing that has happened to you. Yes. But do you know that you can be served the best food? But in your mentality, the mindset that you have, you might not even enjoy the best meal. When, when I went to the UK, I realized that my children are doing something. When they are eating, they are watching their tablets. <coughs> so Jehu is watching his phone. Alexis is watching uh, the laptop. Angel is watching the tablets. So I realized, I said, these children, they will not enjoy the food because they are watching series on the Netflix and they want to finish them. So they are busy eating. So the trick was you will take away the stew, take away the things that really make food nice, and then place a plate of dry rice in front of them. Then I know that they were not enjoying the food. They were watching the thing on the tablet. So they were not even enjoying food because their mind is on what they are watching. They are just consuming, consuming, consuming. Then I realize that this is life. You can be at the best place, but your mindset can make you feel like it's a bad place. And it's not a bad place, but it's a bad, best place. So when they are collected all the things, all the gadgets, put them away. Come and see them. For the first time, now they are tasting food. Oh, wow, Daddy, this thing tastes nice. I say, yes, it's the same food you ate yesterday. This is the cancel. <laughs> but yesterday, you were not able to enjoy it. Because once you were eating, your mind was on something else. So you couldn't enjoy the food. But now that you don't have any tablets, any food before you, you can enjoy the food. So what I'm trying to say is that enjoy the presence of God. Because you will never have this chance again. Never. There's no way that when you go home, you yourself will pick yourself up. Stand on your feet for two hours. Do hear the hours in your own room. Anyway, you will never do it. And then when you finish, you stand quietly and stretch your hands and pray and worship. And then when you finish, you lead yourself in prayer. Then when you finish, you do confession, chosen God. Jesus is my advocate. Yeah, there will be nobody to even respond. Jesus is my advocate. Jesus is the all time, the finish of my day. You will not do it. So that's why whatever you're doing now, you do it with all seriousness. Because it is paving ways for you. It is Amen. opening doors for you. Amen. Amen. It is opening doors for you. This, the, a time is coming when you are going to be so busy and so rich and so successful. Unless maybe you have given up on your own life. But a time is coming that these prayers you are praying is what is going to preserve you. Amen. Because I believe that no prayer goes in vain. No prayer that you pray. Go through it that way. No, no, no. Even your foolish prayers, God gives them. And at the right time, God will use that prayer to open a door for you. Amen. But I know the devil. Now I have two minutes. The devil has a way of making you feel like. Yeah, the right time for you to pray, but he will make you feel like it's the wrong time to pray. I don't know whether you've ever yes. felt that thing before. Oh, uh, open heavens is going on, or Bible studies is going on. You say, no, 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 let me wait. 
uh, when it's open heavy is our prey. Then, you know, you're always pro pro uh, procrastinating everything, postponing your blessings, postponing the relationship. You are always doing that. Always, always. So when the right time comes, you treat the right time like it's the wrong time. When the wrong time comes, then you want the right time to go. It's all a mess. Your life will be in a mess. Don't postpone the time and the seasons. You must be a sharp person to know that this is my season to be blessed. I feel like this is my season to do a lot of good things. So I'm trying to be very circumspect in all my decisions. I'm trying to be very sharp. Because if I miss this season, I'm finished. This season where I am now, if I want God to continue to bless me, I must sit down well. I must be sharp. If I play with this season, I will end up, if you are not careful, I can easily end up as a war boy in somebody's house. So if you don't want that, be sharp. Because I understand that all my blessings come from God. Maybe you, your blessings come from your uncle. But for me, all my blessings come from God. Oh, yeah. I don't have anybody. Amen. I'm a nobody child. I'm a poor woman's child. And I don't want to forget that. So, if now I found a God who loves me, who cares about me, who wants to continue to bless me, I align myself. Yeah, I want to align myself. Stay connected to God. I want to collect all my blessings. Because I know if I open the doors for sin, sin will come and block the blessings from coming. Amen. So me, I want to be wise in the eyes of God. Just to collect the blessings as much as possible. Collect the blessings. Now that you are here, collect the blessings. Amen. Pray and collect the blessings. Amen. Don't sit down here like the way our pretty sister is sitting here. No, no. You stand and collect the blessings. Yes. Collect it. Nobody is going to give you anything. It is first God that will touch man and the man will give you. Amen. Look how it goes. First who? Oh, who will do what? Amen. So if a man's ways please God, uh -huh. then God will do what? Please man. Please man. Please man. Please Even including those that they think you are their enemy. If your ways please in God. The ones who are looking for you to kill you. The ones who are looking for you to arrest you, to put you in jail, all of those people, when they see you, if your ways please God, God. when they see you, they will put their hand in their pocket okay. and, and they will bless you. Them. When they walk away, they say, Ah, I'm not yeah. that. Yeah. How can you bless you? Like that? Yeah. Yeah. Your enemies will bless you, then later they will think, Ah, how come I'm praying for this person? There are people who have taken, some of you, when I look at your foreheads, I can see that your mental problems is not really, really an inflicting. It's just uh, spells that have been cast. It's just some spells. It's just some demons that are worrying you. The same people who carried you to those places will begin now to pray for you. Right. And they will cancel it. Right. They will cancel the thing right. that they put on him. They, will, they themselves will cancel it. I get what I'm saying. Yes. Each and every soul that is here, you were born great. Greatness was upon you. Nobody will destroy something unless they saw that the thing is great. Greater, if yeah. you were not great, they would leave you alone when you were big. But since you were a child, they saw greatness upon you. That's why they took you to places. That's why they, they mess up your mother and they confuse everything. Greatness. You are great by yourself. Amen. That's why hell hates you. That's why hell is against you. You are great. Now if you want to see you, I can see where you are supposed to be. Bank manager. I can see pilots. I can see architects. I can see great, great politicians. Great people. I can see that. Amen. But something messed the thing up. I can see, some of you, I can see, you know, I can see that, hey, if it wasn't this thing that happened to this guy, this guy, the greatness that is upon this guy, 
if I have to go and talk to this guy, there will be no way that I can have access to this guy to talk to. I can see that on you. When I look at him, for instance, I say, this guy, so rich, I see oil of money all over him. Amen. If it wasn't for what has happened to him, to him, there's no way I can easily walk into his office. I can see a sharp brain that is working with massive companies that they are, I mean, they, they cherish him so much because of the wisdom that God has put in his head. But then what happened has caused the thing to be. I can see. Even him, another millionaire, but he likes slapping people. I can see. They saw the whole thing and they twisted the thing. I can see Dockers, very, very faithful, beautiful wife in somebody's big mansion. That's right. Amen. But the enemy messed the dinner. A great, powerful man in Kumasi. I can see. But the devil will mess the dinner. Greatness as each and every one of you are great. Amen. You're great. Great, oh. you are not, you are not about to be great. You were born great. That is why the enemy will leave ten thousand people and come and sit around you, because if you make it, he's in trouble. How come only you demons? So many demons are coming at you if you are not great. And all night people are driving, going to work, coming back. Only you. When the devil wake up, even New York, even New York, where? Even New York. Quack, 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 quack. Yeah, 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 let me shout Then you see the demons fly. One on his nose, one on his ears, one on his eyes. When he, hey, Charlie, so is you. It's like, it's like the man of the tomb. So many demons in one man. To the extent that even when the demons left the man and entered into pigs, pigs like, oh, this is too many demons. I'm going to die. die. And the, the, the pigs committed suicide. But this man has managed all these 6,000 plus demons. And he's been going everywhere with them. When you look at Gato, Gato is great. But the demons, one who holds his leg, one is holding his left leg, right leg. Pulling him, Let, let's go, no, you don't go, I don't want to get plenty demons. If if we should have, I pray that they will create some 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 goggles, right? Where we we'll put on and then we can see the demons around. Overload. <laughs> you you when the person is coming, say, one man in front of one of those. It's like a lot of stuff is following you. Plenty demons. That are walking and pushing in. <laughs> Plenty demons all over <laughs> because they are afraid of the greatness that is this person to realize who he is to discover himself we are in trouble and I know messages like this you don't like it because for you when I'm preaching like this Satan tells you oh, apostle is just saying that to make you happy <laughs> it's a demon who is saying that to you what I'm telling you is the gospel truth. That's right. But the demon will tell you, oh, okay, you're buying that what apostle is saying. He's just telling you this thing to make you happy. You are a fool if you believe it. No way. <laughs> that is who you are already. And I'm just echoing whatever that you are already. That is why a part of you believes what I'm saying. But another part of you don't want to believe. Yeah. And that is the thing I struggle with. Because a part of me may. I felt like a part of me was standing here many years ago, and I'm, I am ministering. What I'm, whatever I'm doing now, I'm impacting lives, I'm talking to people, I'm changing lives, I love people around me, I'm making guys happy, I chill with guys, I'm, you know, that part is there. But another part was saying, that, no, 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 you're a, first of all, you're a black man. You're from Ghana. Don't drink beer. You are a nobody. You are a poor woman's child. 
Nobody was there to help you when you were a kid. Your father wanted you aborted. So the devil will be giving you all these things. So you just manage your life like that. Manage it. Manage it. Don't dream big. When I'm dreaming big, I say, hey, master, 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 you're going too far. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Sell some newspapers, big. Sell some oranges, big. <laughs> Something small to keep it going. Don't dream big. But a part of me is saying, no, you're bigger than this. Amen. You should be able to do better than this. Amen. Why are you settling for this? Once in a while, the giant in me will pop up. And then once in a while, I'm still back as a kid. Pity, pity. I remember you. How was I even born to cry? If I die, there will be one more space left in the earth for somebody else. Why am I here? The problem was I didn't like, I don't like pain. So if I want to commit suicide self, I'm contemplating whether it will go through or whether I'm, I'm going to be handicapped. <laughs> if I shoot myself with a knife and I don't die, to what will happen? If I take the rat poison and then my belly may crow, 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 and I go to the toilet, I, what will happen? If I jump and I don't die and I break my leg, I'll be in a wheelchair. I don't like pain. I thank God that I was a coward enough that I don't like pain, so God preserved me. The truth makes me tired. <laughs> because it's too plain. The truth makes you tired. But if you don't quit, the good that you got going for you, you don't quit and you keep pressing on, you will enjoy. Amen. The truth. What is the truth? Whatever God says is truth. Yeah. I know you think this paint is gray, but if God speaks to you and says it's no more gray, right. it's white. You need that. Yes. And wrap it. Yes. You know that even if you think it was God who said it's white and you believe it, God will count it unto you as righteousness. Because God judges us by the reason. So, you are standing here and God, God tells you, you hear that God is speaking to you. And you do the thing. And in the sight of all of us, maybe the thing is wrong. But God looks at you, look at this, my son. He thought I said that. God loves people who obey his voice. Amen. So, before you realize, God is saying, if this boy is hearing the voices that are saying these things to him, and he thinks that is my voice, then Satan, don't speak anymore. Demon, don't speak anymore. From henceforth, I will speak to that boy. Amen. Amen. And before you realize, now you are a man which is of God. Amen. So, you are blessed. I will still say I love you. Amen. I bring my sermon to the end. But today we are going to have a great man who is going to teach us about addictions, me mental illness, and all kind of stuff. I'm very excited. I can't wait for him to come. Uh, so there, I want you to bath, get yourself ready. He's going to project some stuff on the TV and teach you guys. All because I love you. I want you to have knowledge that will not let you go backwards. Amen. So, one thing that I've noticed since I came back is that you are not looking nice for me. I don't know what has happened to your shaving, you know, because I, I remember my guys, you know, we always shaved neatly. Uh, when, before I was a leader, you know, he made sure that everybody shaved nice, cut, good. I want that thing to come back. More from back. One from Bar, okay, then we'll bring from Bar. But we have we have our chief. This is Frank Bar's boss. From Bar took the machines away. Don't worry, I'll release new machines. Okay, I'll release new machines for you guys. Okay, so if it is, I quickly go to my room and bring the machines so that this morning, no, you start shaving. Shave my guys, everybody. 
I want some cats. The two machines, bring them quickly. All right? So that is the first thing um, that I'm, I'm mindful of. The second thing.